All right. Hello, and this is the very first episode of Dr. Hasenkopf Presents. This video is a uh, introduction to metal casting. And I also have an assistant, Kleiner, my lovely little assistant. I'm just going to go over the basics and the equipment and try and edit this video into something entertaining and maybe a little bit educational. So to do aluminum casting at home, you get a bag full of sand here. And this is called green sand. It's like sand and bentonite and it should be ever slightly damp. I think this is a little dry so I might have to come back and do this later. All right, you need a box. You need a box here. And this box has size, but no top or bottom. And it's meant to clamp together like that. But these holes are used to align it. So what you do is you fill it in with sand in your pattern and then you place one on top of the other and make a hole through it and you pour the aluminum in. I'm going to cover that later. I'll make a video about that. I'm just going over my equipment here. I don't even know how to use this GoPro. I just got it. You got a furnace. I made this furnace out of a steel can and it's got some heat resistant stuff in it. It runs on propane, there's a propane tank, got a pressure regulator, a rubber mallet for packing your sand in there. I've got uh, my crucible, I usually use an old can. Soup cans work good, you can get a couple uses out of them. I've got some, what's in here? Oh yeah, this is my pounce. It's a little bit of graphite dust, you don't want to breathe that stuff. You use that for dusting your pattern and the graphite dust fills in the minor imperfections and makes it look nice. It's some clamps, it even says so on the bag. Clamps. See that? Clamps. Uh, my other equipment is, oh yeah, this muffin tin. Got the muffin tin there for pouring out your excess aluminum. Uh, it's a tripod stand for the GoPro, which I don't know how to use yet. My lovely assistant Kleiner. What else? Okay, I'm going to set up. I set the pattern up. Set the box up. Or a flask. It's also called a flask. This one's been burned a little bit here because sometimes it leaks. And that's why you got to clamp it. So I'm going to set up and then well, I guess I'll get my act together. But Dr. Heisenkopf, how are you going to form the empty cavity inside the box of sand? That is a good question, Kleiner. And we will do it with this. What you have here is a sand core that's made with sodium silicate and some old blasting sand that I had. Now you mix the sodium silicate with the sand at 4% by weight, but since math has never been a thing with me, I just take a wild guess and then I burn it with the forge burner to cook it to burn out anything that's like not supposed to be in there like pine needles or other stuff. And here is the pattern. This is a pattern for a finned breather cover that is used on a Honda CB550 motorcycle. Sand core takes up the space on the inside, and that is left inside the cavity. This forms the cavity. You take the box apart, take the, ca the pattern out, leave the core in, put the box back on, and then pour it. And that should do it. The important thing to note is straight surfaces must be at an angle so that this can be lifted out once you form the cavity. 
and it started out as a breather cover, but I modified it to use it as a casting pattern. So we'll see what happens. All right, so Dr. Hasenkopf here again, and there has been a change of plans because I'm not going to be making one of these. I'm instead going to be making one of these because I don't have the right size cans to fill this in the mold. I need to do two at the same time. I don't have two that are exact same size. So instead of trying this one, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to make one of these. This is an alternator cover for a supercharged Honda that I built, but I need a spare. And I think this would make a good air cleaner lid. Like if I drilled this and spot face it, I think you could put a wing nut on this and this would make a nice air cleaner lid for somebody. I'm not gonna try and make another one and sell it. That's the actual piece. Here's my pattern. It's just a simple flat pattern made out of wood and it's been coated with some clear coat or varnish or whatever and these letters are carved out of wood. And these are all glued on and these cooling fins, this is all glued on and built up out of this uh, piece of, I think, uh, what is it? Uh, spruce? No, not spruce. I can't think of the name. But anyway, that's that. So this is the only one I have. It's kind of ratty. I'm going to use it. A spider living in there, but that's the only one I got. I'm going to use it. I'm going to set it up. And I'll show you how I do that. And this is another piece. This is what happens when things go wrong. This is actually one of these but for some reason this leaked the pattern leaked out here and the aluminum level in the in the core or in the, in the cavity dropped and that's how you end up with this here and this is no good that's the core and this would have been a nice casting this would have been an ignition cover and there's the pattern and there's the piece that didn't turn out very well so that's the end of that. Yeah. Fill this in. Now this is the bottom. And the bottom is just filled in. And all you have to do is make the sand your nice, slightly damp green sand. Dump it in there. Put some in. Can you pack it down? Where's my hammer? You can just pack it down like that. And there's marble under here, so this gives me the smooth marble gives me a really a flat surface to put the other setting, or to set the other piece on, to set it on top. I'm not used to doing this. I don't usually make videos because they're a lot of work. I've been practicing social distancing long before this COVID situation came about. This looks dry, but it's very slightly damp. If it was too wet, when the molten aluminum hits it, it creates steam, and that ruins your casting. Because the steam creates 
vapor pockets and porosity in the metal. And then it's no good. So you don't want that. You don't want it too wet. If it's too dry, it falls apart on you. And that's not good either. So it's got to be kind of just right. If it's so wet that it sticks to your fingers, then it's too wet. So that's, that's going to be our bottom. This is the bottom of the bottom. And this is the top. But the pattern sits on top of this, and the next layer goes on top of that. So I'm just going to spray this to get from drying out too much. And I'm going to hide it somewhere. Right over here. Now this. This is the other side. i got to figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, so we'll put the pattern in here, just like that. Then you go and you dump some sand on top of it. Look like pounce. ran out here before chirping. God, that's a noisy little bird. Chirping and singing and tweeting.
this is the top of the top, right here. The top half. It's usually called a flask. I just call it a box. Somehow you gotta remove this. You get a couple of screws. And another thing. for this stuff to come in. I think this is a little too dry. Definitely think this stuff is a little too dry today. We'll see. If nothing else, you will discover a new way of wasting an entire afternoon. Where's my tube? There it is. Sand is definitely too dry. But like they say, Indians vow to, oops, rabbits vow to endeavor to persevere. I said Indians there. I was quoting the wrong movie. Too dry. This stuff is too dry. our cavity to fix this here. Pack it down slightly because any loose sand is going to get washed in. And we don't want that.
set this on top. I didn't want to melt the driveway. Let that cool for a few minutes. And I'll just babble here for a minute. I don't usually make videos like this, they're too much work. I'm very antisocial, I never talk to people. I just do what I want. So usually, when you do this, you need to leave it together for like an hour because it takes a long time for the aluminum to cool off. Even when you think it's solid, it could still be soft inside, so you gotta let it sit for a bit. Now, as you noticed, I poured the excess in the muffin tin to save it. Machining this would take like a while and I don't really like to do that. What I really wanna do is take old broken junk and melt it down and make it into something useful. Now, usually with these, this one turned out perfectly, but sometimes the E or the R or even the A will give me some trouble. So I could go in there with the mill and just mill it out with a little end mill. And then what I would do is sandblast it and then clean it up and then it would look all right. Because you want to keep the, I like the cast finished on this one. This one turned out perfectly. I love this. That's why I didn't use it for anything. I have a spare on the bike and maybe I'll just make one and try and sell it. Maybe I'll sell this one. I'll try and sell it, see if I can get anyone to buy it. Yeah, good luck with that. I never, I never get anyone to buy my shit. I just end up giving it away. Yeah, I'm gonna move this right here. Hot. I'm gonna set this up here. Wait to see what's going on. I have no idea. How to use a GoPro at all, really. I was winging it myself. Yeah. See, that's a little soft right there. It's not still soft. So I'll give it a few more minutes. There are other videos on the internet that you can watch to learn how to do this. It's dangerous. You can get burned. You can set the driveway on fire. You can inhale toxic fumes. You can waste an afternoon. 
You can end up in the emergency room. All kinds of good things can happen. But sometimes you can make something really cool. And got my lovely assistant Kleiner. Kleiner says it's ready to open up, so I'm going to open it up. And we'll see what happens here. and for the purpose of this video I am just gonna go for it yeah, don't touch it with your hands whatever you do try to do is just end up with a usable part. That's all I ever do. I know it's never perfect, they're never perfect. They're never perfect. Sometimes you end up wasting an afternoon and a core. I hate wasting a core. What's nice about this is it's just a flat pattern. Very simple, easy to make. Plate. It's just a plate, really. Yeah, see the E. The E's got a defect in it. It's just a very, very hot. See that one? You can see it. The E. I can mill that out. Then what I'll do is I'll just I'll just sandblast it, and it'll still look like the rest of the casting. This is actually really smooth. You see how loose sand gets washed in and degrades the quality. And there's inclusions here. You know this is a homemade casting, so it's not going to be like I'm not a professional. I'm just an idiot that works in the driveway. That's where I think Kleiner is smarter than me sometimes. And that's Kleiner's a stuffed rabbit. Yeah, the rest of the letters look okay, just that E. Cooling fins are fully formed. The little details are alright, that's still very, very hot. I'm just gonna let that cool off now before I mess with it anymore. So there you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or share, or whatever they do with YouTube videos. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. I'll just go back to what I was doing. All right. Hippity hoppity. And we're back. One of the things I wanted to go over was how to make an aluminum casting using the lost foam method. You see here, this pink foam is just from somebody's house that came off either during the last hurricane or, I don't know, I might have found it along the road somewhere. But this is a quick and dirty way of making a casting. Any shape that you can make out of foam can be rendered in aluminum as long as you don't have too many bores or holes but you can do it with this and what you do is you pack it in the box or your flask or whatever you want to call it it's just a box without a top and a bottom you pack it in there and you leave two holes so you can pour the aluminum in 
when it hits the foam, it vaporizes the foam and takes up the space. Now this foam generates some toxic vapors, so Kleiner is going to have the mask on too. And I'm going to pack this in a box. I want to say flask, but I also call it a box. Like this here, like you saw in a previous segment. And once again, I'm doing this under duress for a friend. Because I like explaining myself so much. But anyway, I will cut this and then we will get started. You like music? Usually when I do things like this, I tend to hear the theme from the Benny Hill show in my head. So turn that on if you feel like it. Like I said before, I don't enjoy explaining myself to people. But don't let that spoil your fun. I'm just a crazy person. Get yourself a big pile of sand and a hammer. Gotta be careful not to damage the foam because the foam is soft. And this is gonna be the bottom, I think. Yeah, this is gonna be the bottom or the top. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Sometimes I can't quite make up my mind. What's some bentonite doing here? I added some bentonite to this, but it's I didn't mix it very well, as you can see. I am just a chair moisture that works in a defense plant. This is only sitting on a five gallon, that's why it's rocking so much out here in the driveway garage. I didn't mention I need this block for one of my engine swapping projects in that car. But that might be a story for another time for even someone else's channel.
there's our foam. I need to make a hole to get the aluminum in. That's where this tubing comes into play. I think I'm going to start... I don't know. Maybe I'll just go... We'll just go right here. Like I said before, you gotta tamp it down a little bit so that you don't get any loose sand washed into your casting because that'll cause inclusions and it'll be difficult to machine. But the beauty about this is that I can go from a raw material to a machined part in a matter of a few hours. Whereas if I wanted to buy this, if I wanted to buy an aluminum piece this size, I'd have to wait for like a week to get it. Now I'm just going to put one more over here. One's a fill and one's a vent. So that way... You know when your casting is full. And I can do this without ruining it. Another thing I have to mention is that you need to leave at least an inch and a half at the edge to seal it, because otherwise you want to leak, and that's going to ruin your casting. And not to mention, waste an entire afternoon. See what I mean here? I'm just going to flip this down a little bit. And this is going to be my fill side. I'm just going to dump it in there. I'm going to get my spray bottle. Let's see, there's a pine needle. Get my spray bottle. All I need to do is take a little bit of this out here. Sorry if my arm's in the way. I don't like making these videos. I'm doing this under duress. But if you would like to see more videos under duress, please let me know in the comments below. I'll put this on the side. I'm going to spray my arm. Put this on the side and do the bottom. Bottom simple, you just give it a, fill it up. You can tell I'm not used to talking with people because I'm so I didn't I didn't mention this before. These ridges here are you just put them in there so that the sand grips the side and doesn't fall out when you tip the thing over. Incidentally, Budget Casting Supply, or BCS, I think it's bcs.com, is a great resource for not only materials, but some literature and some web pages, very informational and instructional in nature. That can help you out if you wanted to start doing this. 
There are many videos that you can watch. Again, this is just a basic overview of what I do for some friends. You know who you are. I think this is good anything this way. Even parts for a supercharged Honda motorcycle. Because we all know life is cheap to that sort. Life is cheap. Due to this COVID situation, I miss going to all the powwows. I love the powwows. Pass the peace pipe around, listen to the music and watch the dancers. The food, the buffalo burgers are fantastic. All right, flip this over. to worry about alignment. I'm just going to set it on there like that. Transfer it to my board and I'll cut this and we'll be back when I pour the metal. enough. may not have been enough in there. But all I need is a piece of metal that I can machine on the mill. I don't have any excess. That's all. So don't breathe the fumes. It's polystyrene and you're burning it. So don't breathe those gases right there. Oh wow, see it's still soft. I should have left it. But I just need a block about that size. But anyway, that's lost foam. I'm not going to ask you to click like and subscribe, but if you like the other videos that I have, then you may do so. And again, if you want to see more videos under duress, let me know in the comments below. Thank you. <laughs>